the, the enemies continued to attack Dylan even if, after he got home. But those enemies now were not physical enemies shooting guns at him. They were enemies in his mind. And the memories, uh, the trauma, the experiences that he had, the ugliness of war, the ugliness of death, uh, friends that he lost, experiences that he went through, things that he had to do. It was a difficult, difficult time for Dylan when he got home. And his mama kept praying. His mama kept praying. That transition from military life to civilian life did not come easy for Dylan. And unfortunately, um, as happens, uh, he began to do some things to try to uh, take care of the, the memories and try to get the stuff out of his man, mind. He began to uh, frequent bars and, and do things that he thought he needed to do to try, try not to remember the things that he could not forget. But guess what? His mama kept praying. <laughs> Reba kept praying. And she turned her fears into faith. Do you hear that right now? She turned her fears into faith. She turned her worries into prayers. Do you hear that? She turned her worries into prayers. She prayed without ceasing for her son. And at a critical moment in his life, a critical juncture in his life, a friend that just happened <laughs> to invite him to a revival meeting at a local church. And Dylan went, he was begrudgingly went to this meeting, and he fully intended that as soon as the meeting was over, as soon as the service was over, he was going to bolt out the back door as soon as the meeting was over. Uh, but the message from the pastor, the message from the preacher that night struck home. A mama was praying, <laughs> and the message struck home. The invitation was given. The Holy Spirit was working in Dylan's life, and he found himself uh, gripping the back of that pew in front of him with white knuckles, uh, uh, with a, a grip like he's never had before, and found himself staggering down to the altar in tears, falling to his knees, and he gave his life to the Lord Jesus. A mother's prayers were answered. I want to tell you something. We're continuing this morning, even without a, a congregation in front of me today. Uh, we're continuing this morning in a series of messages entitled, this series of messages is entitled Laying the Foundation. The title of the message today is Let's Pray. Because I want to tell you something, my friends. Prayer is one of the key parts of this foundation that we're laying here at First Baptist Flora. I just want to tell you as your pastor and as you continue to get to know me and as I continue to get to know you, I will tell you that one of the things that we're going to do a lot of, one of the things that we're going to do a lot of corporately together, uh, certainly individually and privately, but together, one of the things that we will do is we will pray. And we have to pray. It's one of the key parts of the foundation that we are laying as a church family to do the things that God's calling us to do, to be the people that God is calling us to be, to accomplish the mission that he's given to us of fulfilling the great commission to go and make disciples of all nations. We must pray. And so we're going to pray. And today we're going to talk about that. So I want to ask you if you're there, if you've got your Bible, if you can turn over to Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And... Uh, Probably familiar verses to you. I know uh, one of my church members from uh, Country Woods, these are his favorite verses, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And uh, we're going to read these two verses together. If we were here together this morning, I'd ask you to stand up. You can stand up in your home if you want to right now, or you can just stay seated or whatever. Uh, but we're going to read Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. The Word of God says, Do not be anxious for anything. Did you hear that? Let me read, let me read that again. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And listen to this, y'all. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May God bless the reading of his wonderful word this morning. Let me pray for us. Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we ask you, Lord, uh, to bring clarity to your word today. Holy Spirit, this is your moment. Uh, we thank you that uh, we can gather right now. Thank you for people that are 
uh, watching me on some sort of <laughs> some sort of screen right now Lord thank you for that and Holy Spirit I pray that uh, that you will speak to our hearts as we gathered this morning and you will bring uh, illumination to the Word of God today uh, through this broken frail vessel God you will bring truth forth and God then by the power of your spirit you will also give us the ability to apply it to our lives and, and to obey you and you will change us because of that for your glory and yours alone in Jesus name I pray amen thanks so much you too may be seated back there <laughs> Philippians I love the book of Philippians in uh, the New Testament it's the uh, it's the joy letter of the New Testament. And I'll tell you what, if there's anything that we need to, we need to have today in our lives, I think it's some joy. And, and Philippians is a great book, a short little uh, letter in uh, the New Testament. Uh, don't let its short um, uh, length surprise you or, or um, uh, make you think that well, it's not really uh, not that much to it. Man, it is a wonderful, powerful, a uh, little short letter in the New Testament. And, and joy is the main theme of this little uh, four-chapter uh, book in the New Testament. The word joy or the word rejoice is used about 13 times, at least in the English Standard Version of Scripture. That's what I preach out of, um, the English Standard Version. And, and I counted about 13 times that the word joy or rejoice is used in uh, the English Standard Version. Um, these folks that, that Paul was writing to, Paul wrote this. And these people that Paul wrote to, these, the church at Philippi, these people brought a lot of joy to Paul. They, 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 uh, they brought gladness to his heart. They, they just, he delighted in them. They delighted in him. It's kind of like uh, Steve Stone. Uh, and, and just, you can tell that uh, y'all brought joy to him. He brought joy to y'all. And, and that's, that's what Paul uh, felt about. That's how he felt about these people. And he wanted to make sure, listen, he wanted to make sure that these people knew that. Uh, he wanted to make sure that, that, that they knew how special they were to him. Uh, back over in uh, chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, the, uh, it says this. I like the New Living Translation, how it puts it. And Philippians 1, 3 through 5 says, uh, Paul said this, Every time I think of you, I, I love this, Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Have you got somebody like that in your life? That every time you think of that person, you give thanks to God for them. That's what Paul says. He says, whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy. Why? Because you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the first time you heard it until now. I mean, that's how Paul felt about these people. Do you have somebody, do you have people like that in your life? A little side note here. I want to ask you and encourage you. And especially right now during these crazy times we're living where people are anxious and concerned and worried and, and kind of um, uh, uptight about some stuff. I, I promise you there's somebody in your life today that needs to hear from you. There's somebody in your life today that needs to hear from you and, and that you let them know how special they are to you. That you let them know how thankful you are for them. You might want to just right now, while you're sitting there, just jot a name down. Maybe there's somebody that you say, well, yeah, I need to call so-and-so this week. I need to jot a little thank you note this week to, to somebody and this certain person because of what they, what they have meant to you and how they have ministered to you in times of need. Man, I know I've got people in my life that have ministered to me. Uh, you know, there's, there, sometimes people ask the question, uh, who's the pastor to the pastor? And, and sometimes you kind of feel that way. Uh, Gil, you, you probably have felt that way at times too. That You know, uh, and, and I'm not having a pity party. I'm just saying sometimes uh, that, that happens. And it's encouraging when people, uh, when people recognize that and they step into our lives and they encourage us. So just think about that. That's what Paul was doing with these people. He was just saying, you folks are special to me. And I thank God every time I think about you. Um, we, we, did second, we were preaching from 2 Timothy last week. And that's a prison epistle. 2 Timothy is a prison epistle. It was actually Paul's last one. Philippians is also one of the prison letters, one of the prison epistles. He probably wrote this around A.D. 60 from a Roman prison cell. It was probably about six or seven years before the end of his life. Um, Paul wrote this letter as a thank you note. It was interesting. We read this thank you note from 
uh, from Steve this morning. But Paul wrote this letter as a thank you note. He had, that he had received a financial gift from this church at Philippi. And so it's a, it's a tender letter from him. I'd encourage you this week, man, just take some time, read through this. It's four chapters. You could read it in one sitting and, and just uh, read it and, and get the tenderness. It's a tender letter. It's not really heavy on uh, heavy instruction dealing with uh, a lot of doctrinal error or problems in the church. He just wanted to say thank you to these people and to let them know that, that when you have Jesus in your life and when you live for him, the result in your life will be overflowing, overwhelming joy in your life. Even today, in a crazy day, when, when we're, we're uh, dealing with uh, wild stuff that we've never had to deal before, knowing Christ, even in the midst of the storms of our lives, brings overwhelming, wonderful, overflowing joy. And that's what this book is about. It's a book about Christ in your life. He said in Philippians 1.21, for to, me to, for to me to live is Christ. This joy because Christ is in your life. It's a book about Christ as your Lord. He said in Philippians 2, 10, 11, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So it's a book about Christ as your Lord. It's a book about Christ as your goal. He said in Philippians 3, 14, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So it's a book about Christ as your goal. It's a book about Christ in your mind. He, he says in Philippians 4, 8, he says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, uh, whatever is, is commendable, if there's anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Focus your mind on these things. And instead of focusing your mind on the coronavirus, focus your mind on the these things, things that are good and true and honorable. And then it's a book about Christ as your strength. Because we, know, we all know that verse, Philippians 4.13. You can say it right now with me. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Do you see where the joy comes from? It comes from Christ in your life. Christ is your Lord. Christ is your goal. Christ in your mind. Christ as your strength. This Christ is our foundation. This Christ is the head of this church. This Christ is the one who is our advocate before the Father. He's the one who right now is interceding for us before the Father. He's the one through whom we pray and in whose authority we pray. So let's pray church we need to pray we need to pray a lot let's pray a lot let's pray passionately let's pray fervently let's pray believingly let's pray privately let's pray corporately let's pray scripturally let's pray for lost people to be saved for prodigals to come home for the sick to be healed for addictions to be broken for marriages and families to be saved let's pray for the coronavirus to stop let's pray for missionaries let's pray for pastors and ministers to be called out for for leaders to to be equipped and leaders to, to step up in our churches. Let's pray for our nation's leaders, our state's leaders, our local government leaders. Let's, let's pray for the church to grow in every way. Let's pray. Church, <laughs> let's pray. And as we do, as we look at these verses again from Philippians 4, 6 and 7, let me encourage you to do these three things in your prayer. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. And let's do these three things. First of all, address your anxieties with prayer. Paul said there, those first words, do not be anxious about anything. I think that's a word for us today, isn't it? Do not be anxious for anything. Um, there's certainly no surprise that right now anxiety <laughs> is definitely at a uh, overdrive level in, 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 our, in our society right now. Literally in the world right now. The, the, the level of anxiety in our world right now is probably at a, at a place where most of us have never experienced before. Um, 
So there's no surprise in this. The, the, the stress is a major issue in everyone's life. Um, in so many people's lives, stress is, is, is just wreaking havoc in their lives. And that, that might be true of you today uh, with, with all this going on. It, it causes uh, health problems. Um, it, it causes physical manifestations. It, it causes relationship problems. It causes problems in and productivity, you can't get things done that you need to get done because you're so stressed out about this. You know you need to be doing this, but you're stressed about this. You know you ought to be accomplishing this, but this has got your anxiety level so high that you can't think about this. And all of these things, and we've all experienced it at different times in our lives, and maybe even right now, it's, it's at the forefront of our lives and in our minds and in our, in, in our, in our families and, and, and workplaces and all that kind of stuff. We're trying to decide what we're going to do with kids that are still out of school as my job job going to be okay what's going to happen stock markets tanked all this all of the things that have brought stress and and that's where we are and yet the word of God tells us today do not be anxious about anything Adrian Rogers said this stress is that gap between the demands placed on us and our ability to meet those demands the gap between the demands placed on us and our ability to meet those demands. The Word of God speaks to us. It instructs us in this verse to not let our anxieties and our stress overwhelm us. This word for anxious has to do with anything that, that burdens us, anything that encumbers us right now with this anxious care. And the Word tells us, God tells us, through His Word, He tells us, don't let those things weigh us down. Don't tremble and quake with fear. Uh, several different translations of this verse very simply put it in very clear vernacular. Don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. <laughs> and you're sitting there watching going, yeah, right. Yeah, right, John. That's, that's easier said than done. And, and I'm with you on that. I, I'm with you right there. That, that, that might be true right now. It, it, it may be difficult for us to say, just don't worry about anything. And I'm with you on that. And yet, yet, friends, listen to me. We've got to do what the Word of God says. We've got to stay in the Word of God. And we can't ignore what the Scriptures tell us to do. And that is right now, right now, right now, take those worries to the Lord in Prayer. Address your anxieties with prayer. There's no better thing that we can do. It's been so interesting. I, so a lot of y'all are on have the U version app on your phone, and 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 you do a lot of those uh, uh, reading plans and devotional plans, like I do. Some of us are doing one together right now, and it's been interesting as I've looked at that. And you can tell when people are signing up for. If you don't get the, if you don't have that app, I'd encourage you to go get. It. It's called U version. Put it on your phone. It's a Bible app. Great, great uh, uh, Bible app. But it's been interesting as I've looked. You can tell when people sign up for these different plans. And it's been interesting over the last few weeks, the number of people I'm seeing. And I'm, I, listen, I'm not condemning it. I'm not, I'm not judging because I've, I've done the same thing. That uh, So many people are signing up for plans that have to do with how to deal with worry. How to deal with stress, how to deal with anxiety. That's what, we're, that's what we're looking for right now. That's what we're looking for right now. And this word today tells us exactly how to do that. Address your anxieties with prayer. This verse says, don't, let, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything. Everything. Underline that word in your, in your Bible. In everything. By prayer. And supplication. You know what everything means when you see it in the Bible? <laughs> it means everything. Everything. Pray about everything. So, let's do that right now. Right now. If we were sitting here, <laughs> if we're sitting here today, I would ask you to raise your hands. So I can't tell whether or not you raise your hands, but just think about this. How many of you are anxious about the coronavirus? Put your hands up. Well, probably in here there'd be a bunch of us with our hands up. Mine is. A few folks in here today, are, their hands are up. So, Father, I'm pr Father, right now we bring that to you. We're going to pray about everything. Father, we bring our anxiety about the coronavirus to you. How many of you are anxious about your kids' future? 
How many of you are anxious about your grandkids' future? You got your hand up wherever you are? Father, we bring that to you right now. We're anxious about that. How many of you are anxious about some sort of health issue that you or someone you love is dealing with? Is your hand up right now? I got a friend of mine that's, that's going to be going in for surgery on Tuesday. Very, very good friend of mine. Anxious about that. I know that his wife and his family and, and friends are, are anxious about that. Don't really know what they're dealing with yet. So, Father, we bring that to you. We're anxious about those types of things. How many of you are anxious about a, a work situation that you're dealing with? How many of you are anxious about a relationship situation in your life? Your family, your marriage, your kids, uh, 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 some type of relationship. How many of you are anxious about things like that? Maybe your hand would be up right now with that. And so, Father, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus... We bring those things to you because the Word of God says to address our anxieties with prayer. With, in everything, by prayer and supplication, address your anxieties in prayer. Y'all, I'm telling you right now, there is nothing else more important that we could be doing as a church than praying. Our, our, our president has asked us today and has declared this day as a day of prayer for our nation. And... and there's, I think that's wonderful. I think it's exactly what we need to be doing as the church and, and to address these things that we're anxious about in prayer. So we do that, and we will continue to do that. The second thing is this, address your anxieties with prayer. The second thing is this, include thanksgiving in your prayer. Address your anxieties with prayer and include thanksgiving in prayer. Because he says there, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So listen to me. I think this is why Paul put this in here. <laughs> even while I was asking you about things that you were anxious about, and even as we talk about anxiety, you know what the enemy likes to do? He likes to start dropping those thoughts and those seeds of doubt into your mind. Yeah, you're worried about that because of this and this and this. And yeah, you're praying, but it, God's really not going to answer that prayer. God's, I mean, this stuff is not really all that y'all think it is. And, and, and here's what we got to do. As we're addressing our anxieties with prayer, we need to be careful not to let the enemy, listen, not to let the enemy drag us into a pit of depression and darkness. He'd love to do that. He'd love to take these anxieties and just multiply them and make them bigger than they are and cause us to lose sleep and cause us not to be able to get our work done and cause us to, to snap at our husband and wife and, and get mad at our kids uh, in, in ways that we shouldn't and, and spend more money than we should and drink more than we should and all those types of things. He'd love for us to do all those things. And by doing that, then he drags us into this pit of depression, into this pit of darkness, and the way we battle against that is by including thanksgiving in our prayers. Listen, church, there, listen, church, there is nothing. Listen, there is nothing, and I've got that in all caps in my notes right here. There is nothing that can come against us that will steal our reasons for gratitude as children of God. Nothing, nothing will come against us. If we were together in corporate worship, Today, my plan today was to put that statement up on the screen and have us all say it together in this place. So I'm going to say it for us again. And, and you can just join with me in saying this. Nothing will ever come against me that will steal my reasons for giving thanks to God. Nothing. There's nothing that will come against us that will take those reasons for thanksgiving away. Remember what Paul said, Romans chapter 8, verses 37 through 39. Listen to these words from Paul. No, in all, I love this. <laughs> in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And then he went on to say this, for I am convinced 
that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, which would include the coronavirus, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's your reason for thanksgiving. Nothing will separate us from the love of God. And so, as we address our anxieties, we include thanksgiving in our prayer. So we need to remember to thank God in the midst of struggle, in the midst of difficult days of an empty sanctuary, in the midst of all of this, in spite, and in spite of our struggles and our anxieties, we need to remember to thank God. Always, Philippians 5.18, Philippians 5.18 says this, no matter what happens, always be thankful. No matter what happens, always be thankful for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. You see, giving thanks is not just something uh, we should do just when we feel like it. It's the will of God that we as his children always give thanks because that keeps us focused on the one to whom we owe everything the one who has saved us the one who has blessed us the one who has promised to meet every need that we have the one who will take care of us through every storm of life there's always a reason to give thanks so as we pray let's pray as we pray we will address our anxieties with prayer keep doing that all the time. Pray all the time. Pray without ceasing is what Paul says. And second thing is we will include thanksgiving in our prayer. We'll always thank God. And here's the awesome result. The awesome result of praying this way is the third thing. We will experience peace through prayer. Be anxious for nothing. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And then this is what will happen. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Listen, when we pray and we address our anxieties in prayer, when we pray and we include thanksgiving in our prayer, we will experience the peace of God in our lives in an incredible way. I'll just tell you, that's the truth. I, 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 the Word of God tells us that, but I can tell you from personal experience, and I can guarantee you, if we were sitting here today and if I could take a microphone and go all around this sanctuary, go to people all over this sanctuary, there would be people everywhere that could give testimony that that's the truth, that when I prayed, when I brought my anxieties to the Lord in prayer, when I thanked Him in the midst of everything that I was going through, I could go to person, 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 and people would say, and God's peace flooded over my life. God's peace. It, it, maybe all the, uh, 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 the hard times didn't go away and, and maybe we still had to walk through and we will have to walk through difficult times. But even in the midst of those times, the peace of God that transcends our ability to understand it. You can't comprehend it because it's God's. It will, that peace will guard your heart and your mind in Christ. Jesus. Y'all listen to me. It's not just any peace. <laughs> it's not just any peace. It's God's peace. It's His amazing, all-surpassing, incomprehensible, powerful, Christ-filled, Holy Spirit-empowered, guard-your-heart-and-mind peace. That's the peace we're talking about here. And when you pray, and when we pray, we will experience God's peace. It's the peace that brings rest to your restlessness. It's the peace that brings calm to your storm-filled mind. It's the peace that brings strength to your weariness. It's the peace of God. Someone once said, Jesus is no security against the storms, but he is perfect security in the storms. He's the one who brings us that peace. So listen, my friends, 
Um, we're going to pray. We're going to pray a lot. We're going to pray nonstop. We're going to pray every chance we get um, as a church, corporately and individually. We're going to pray. And that's a part of the foundation that we will stand on as the people of God, especially during these trying times that we're in right now, these difficult days. And we're not going to let fear overwhelm us. That's happened a lot in a lot of people's lives. Uh, it's, it's easy, even for us that are people of faith, it's easy to kind of get swept up by that stuff from time to time. We've got to be careful there. But this is the antidote to that. This is the way we stand against that, is to pray, to bring our anxieties to the Lord, to, to thank Him in the midst of everything we're going through, and to experience the peace that He will bring, that He is bringing to us in the midst of this. We're going to pray. And so I just want to encourage you as I kind of wrap up this uh, this message this morning, I want to encourage you uh, to join me as we pray this morning. Um, I'm not going to take for granted that every person that's watching this message today, I'm not going to take for granted that every person knows the Lord Jesus and has experienced his peace in their life. Now, there may be somebody that's watching today that you've never truly given your life to Christ. Uh, you don't have the peace. The reason you don't have peace is because you don't have the Prince of Peace in your life. And so today, I just want to invite you, if you're watching today on your phone or TV or computer, and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you never experienced the peace of God in your life because the Prince of Peace, who is Jesus, has never taken over your life and you've never given your life to Him, then would you do that today? Would you give your life to Him today? You can just call out to Him. The Bible says in Romans 10, 10 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That means you, right now, wherever you are, if you're sitting in a car or a home or a restaurant or coffee shop or wherever you may be, you can pray and trust Christ today to save you. And the Prince of Peace will give you his peace and give you eternal life. And then the, there's a bunch of us that are watching and here today that we do know the Prince of Peace. And we got to be the people that are leading out in prayer and, and are trusting the Lord in these, these days that we're living in. So I just want to invite you to pray with me. We're going to conclude the service. Thank you all for tuning in and listening and watching and being a part of this. Again, we'll let you know uh, what we're going to do next week. We may be doing this again next week. We'll let you know. We'll trust the Lord with that. We'll pray about that. <laughs> and we'll trust the Lord with that in the days to come. But right now, we're going to pray. So would you join me as we do this? Father, we recognize today that you are sovereign over all creation. We believe that, and we thank you for that, God. We thank you, Lord, that our God is strong and mighty. Um, I think about that kid's song that we used to sing. Uh, uh, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. And, and that's, the, that's, that's not just a little old kid's song. That's the truth, and we stand on that truth. We believe that today, God. That you are strong. You are big. You are strong. You are mighty. There is nothing, God, that you cannot do. You are the sovereign God over all creation. You're the God of our salvation. You're our rock and our refuge, the, the one to whom we run in our times of, of fear, in our times of uncertainty. We come to you. We run to you. You're our strong tower. And we run to you for safety and security and strength. And you give it to us because you love us. God, there are folks that are watching right now. They, they, they're scared. And we all are in some way. We all deal with it. We're not, nobody's uh, 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 making fun of anybody or condemning anybody for wrestling with some fear and things like that today. It's, it's real, God. It's, it's, it's there. It's, it's, it's what we've got to deal with. But, uh, God, I pray for those that really are wrestling with it in a big way. Lord, that you will give them and bring to them by the power of your spirit, even this morning, even right now, God, that you just flood their lives with the peace that passes all understanding. Just let them know, God, it's going to be okay. You got this. We're in the palm of your hand and no one can snatch us out. And we believe that because it's the truth. And we, we rest in that today, Lord. So I pray for my brothers and sisters that, that really are wrestling with some, uh, some pretty serious fear and anxiety right now. Lord, you take care of them, please, Lord. Uh, just take care of them. And 
Help us as brothers and sisters in Christ to, to come alongside one another, to do what your word tells us in Galatians, to, to bear one another's burdens, and in this way we fulfill the law of Christ. And So help us to do that, Lord, whether that burden is fear, whether that burden is uh, uh, financial need, whether that burden is physical need, what, whatever that is, Lord, um, help us to take care of each other just to do what the church is supposed to do. If there's anything that's come out of this day, this moment where I'm preaching to a nearly empty sanctuary today, God, it's reminded us that this building I'm standing in here in Florida, Mississippi, is not the church. <laughs> the church is made up of the people of God who everywhere today are, are serving you and worshiping you. I do thank you that we do have the time to gather in this place and we'll do that again soon. God, this, is, this building right here, as beautiful as it is, is not the church. So I pray for the church that's out there. The church that needs to be working. The church that needs to be serving. The church that must be praying. The church that needs to be sharing the gospel. Holy Spirit, you empower the church. You have empowered the church. Help us to appropriate that power in our lives and stand for you and live for you. And, and, and share the gospel and minister to people in need and, and do what we're supposed to do as the church, especially in these days. So I thank you, God, that this day has come. <laughs> I thank you for this day and what we've done here today. And today, Father, we do pray for those who are in leadership, for our president, for Folks on the national governmental level that are making serious decisions for state level, for county and local level. God, I pray for school officials that are having to make difficult decisions. I pray for doctors and nurses and people that work in hospitals, Lord. Take care of them as they are literally on the front lines of taking care of people with this uh, sickness. I pray for members of uh, other organizations, a good friend of mine, Lord, that has been deployed with a national uh, uh, emergency group um, to help take care of people over in Georgia that are coming in, Father, and Lord, others, that uh, National Guard people and people that are being deployed with those types of groups and organizations. Lord, you just take care of them, God. Um, meet their needs. I pray for companies and and uh, stores and corporations that are trying to provide necessities for people. Lord, we pray for your provision for the things that we need, whatever those things are. And we just trust you during this time, Lord. And, and again, we just pray that you would stop this virus. How wonderful it would be, God, for the testimony to be that all of a sudden, well, lo and behold, all of a sudden, this virus just went away. <laughs> And God, we know you could do that. Um, but we're just going to trust you every step of the way and help us during this time. Lord, we love you so much. We thank you for loving us. I pray for any person today that may have given their life to Christ, Lord, watching this sermon today. God, to you alone be glory. I pray for that person, that man or woman, boy or girl, who gave their life to Christ today, Lord, that they'll get connected to a church family, whether it's this one or another one that, that preaches the gospel of Jesus, that they'll get connected and, and, and learn what it truly means to live for you now and to grow in you and, and to become a strong man or woman of God, making a difference in the world. Help, help us as this church, as First Baptist Flora, Lord, help us to do what we need to do in this community take care of our folks the people around us in this community in these days but then lord when this thing is over and it's going to be over when this thing's over that we'll still be helping we'll still be sharing we'll still be ministering to people for your glory and yours alone we love you so much father thank you for the time together today in jesus precious name i pray amen hey listen i love you guys thank you so much for tuning in today uh, we will keep you posted this week um, with uh, plans and, and decisions that need to be made uh, for uh, where we will go from here. Uh, but just know that we're praying for you. We're here for you. Please let us know if you need some help. 
I want to speak to our senior adults. If, if you're afraid right now uh, of getting out and going to the store and things like that, and, and you need some help with that, please call us and let us know. And if we can help in any way to go to the store for you, go to the drugstore for you, or things like that to get some food for you, anything, we will do whatever we can do to try to take care of you uh, during this time. Just let us know. We love you. We're praying for you. And we hope uh, to see you in this place again real soon. God bless you guys. Thanks so much.